My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. I hope you want to make friends. I'm just trying to make you some money. My job is not just to entertain you, but to educate and teach you. So call me at 1-800-743-CNBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Pay no attention to the inflation behind the curtain. Yep, Fed Chief Jay Powell took a page from the Wizard of Oz playbook today. And unlike in the movie, he was dead right. I mean, that's really what triggered today's rally with the Dow jumping 189 points. New record. S&P advancing 0.29%, and then Nasdaq gaining 0.40% after being down more than a percent for most of the day. Even though the economy's heating up, Powell insists he'll keep interest rates low through 2023 because it's a mistake to worry about inflation right now. We've still got 6% unemployment. There are bigger fish to fry. Now, a lot of money managers take their cue from the bond market, and bond investors simply refuse to believe the Fed should be or would be so accommodating. These money managers, I'll tell you what they're doing. They're missing out on some very big stock moves. If instead you recognize that the Fed is the stock market's friend, well, you'll catch these moves. Honestly, though, we've got all these new investors who pay no attention to the Fed or the bond market at all. You know what? They're making out like bandits. You may not like it, but in this market, ignorance... It is bliss. House of pleasure. I want to talk about how these groups reacted when this afternoon Powell decided to keep rates low in order to help the unemployed and underprivileged. Yeah, the people who don't work on Wall Street. Rather than getting bent out of shape about a few areas of the economy that are indeed running red hot, including housing. First, you got all these very rich baby boomers who dominate Wall Street. Talk about my generation. Like me, they grew up during a period of inflated inflation. It really eroded purchasing power, and they're scarred by it. They see the specter of inflation everywhere. They expect the Fed to ruthlessly tamp it down, and for most of our career, that's exactly what the Fed did. Then there's uh, group number two, those of us, us, who think Jay Powell's right, either because inflation is likely to be transient or because a little inflation is a small price to pay for a stronger labor market with so many people being left behind because of the pandemic. Finally, you've got the third group, and this is the ignorance is bliss cohort. These people are getting big stimulus checks this week, and they just found out they don't need to file their taxes till May. This camp has no interest in the Fed or the bond market. They just want to make money in stocks. These are mostly younger investors who've never lived through a period of of elevated inflation. So when they see stocks getting pummeled by inflation fears, they dismiss as some sort of prehistoric baby boomer superstition. (laughs) Yeah, they don't want to hear about the bond market or interest rates. I mean, like, who cares? Throw me the diamond hands, YOLO, you bunch of losers. So who's right? When I say Jay Powell is subliminally telling us to pay no attention to the inflation boogeyman behind the curtain, I'm acknowledging that my fellow baby boomers, but they got a point. The big money pullers, uh, especially the hedge fund managers, they believe that Jay Powell's deliberately ignoring inflation because he's not the kind of traditional hard money Fed chair they want. They see Powell as a bleeding heart liberal. Never mind that he was a Republican appointee or that Trump spent years bashing him for being too hawkish. God can't win. All right, where's the inflation? All right, last time we heard from Dow Chemical on this show about how lots of chemical plants are being shut down by big storm in Texas and Louisiana. That's pushing up the price of nearly every form of plastic building block of our society. These price increases are insane, but they're sticking. We know there's tremendous demand for copper. Look at that price. Aluminum, the latter finally moving up after years of dormancy. Price of lumber doubled in the last year. That's the biggest cost of new housing besides labor, which is also rising. Today, Lenar reported barn burner of a quarter, in part because they can charge more for houses. Those prices are sticking. We see steel increases one after another after another. Semiconductor prices soaring because of chip shortages all over the place. There's an unprecedented level of demand, and it's not going down anytime soon. The result? Cars and trucks cost more, and the scarcity of both is driving up prices, including for used cars. Oh, and don't even get me started about oil. You see that every day. How wide is inflation? Listen, Hershey. Hershey caught an upgrade today. And the most salient reason the research firm gave? Unlike every other important agricultural commodity, the price of cocoa isn't increasing. Powell sees all this, and he dismisses it as short-term in nature. 
But these older money managers think he's making a huge mistake. Once inflation gets rolling, they believe it spirals out of control. So they're dumping the growth stocks, dumping them because their future earnings are worth less than a world of inflated, of elevated inflation. Meanwhile, they're piling into the stocks of companies that can put through big price increases. Anything that makes, bends, twists, or spindles a commodity. Like Caterpillar, dear. All right, how about the second group? that don't worry about a cohort. All right, well, the first group wants to wear silly buttons that say whip inflation now. Those of us in the second cohort, and I count myself as a member, we want a pin that says, I'm with Jay. Why? In part because uh, a lot of these price increases indeed are the result of temporary shortages, like the weather. You give it some time, the bottlenecks will clear and prices will come back down. And if you tighten now and the prices come back down, then we'll have a, we'll have a recession for heaven's sake. Just as important, if the Fed wants to stamp out inflation, it has to slam the brakes on the whole economy. That seems like a bad deal right now. We still haven't fully recovered from the pandemic. Entire industries have been devastated, service industries. Millions of jobs lost haven't come back yet. Why the heck would the Fed try to slow down the economy now before everybody's vaccinated, gotten the jobs back? Finally, there's this third group that I like so much, which represents a big chunk of the Robin Hood or Cash App, that's owned by Square Crowd, who've been drawn in by the commission-free trading and the love of it. Oh, they've tasted it. Now, there are millions of these people who are about to get stimulus checks, and they know they want to put a decent chunk of that money to work in the stock market. So they're buying stocks with gusto. Now, they didn't know that Jay Powell talked today. They didn't. I mean, they may not even know who Jay Powell is. Uh, they don't get that stocks have historically keyed off of bonds. They don't care about that. Here's what they do know. You make no money in bonds. True. You make no money in cash. True. But ever since the market bottomed a year ago, you make big money in stocks. True. Their buying is what supports this bull market. They're the ones who can't be bothered with the baby boomers inflation obsession. They just wish us boomers would just fade away. So where does it put us? Here's the bottom line. The market's got three camps. The one that's leaving the stage kicking and screaming because they can't believe the Wizard of Oz is the Fed chief. Then the one that says, Jay, we trust. And then the ignorance is bliss crowd that just wants to go buy some Tesla or put their stimulus money to work in one of visionary ARC ETS of Kathy Wood. What matters is that two of these three camps like stocks, which is why we rallied today instead of going down, which is what might have happened if the inflationistas were still running the darn show. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Cramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Cramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.